Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and today we are going to make a Barbie quilt. Not for Barbie, for me. Not little, big. Ever since I was a kid, I have loved Barbie. Forever, always loved her. I know that she's not quite in proportion. I don't care. I didn't love her because of the way she looks. I love her because she's got everything. She has all the stuff and the best jobs. CEO, architect, everything. She had the greatest houses. Not she had, she has the best houses, the best cars, the best pets. She's just awesome. This is my favorite because this is IT Barbie. And you know, I'm in IT. So she and I are sisters. This is one of my collectibles. I used to collect Barbie more avidly than I do now, but I still have some of my stuff. My granddaughter, every time she sees this, wants it. And I'm like, nope, not till I'm dead. So you can see my love for Barbie. And when the Barbie movie came out, I thought, this is great. She's going to be in the limelight again. So I'm going to make another Barbie quilt. If you want to see my past Barbie quilts, I will link them in the description below and maybe put a card here and there that will take you to one of those videos. Now, let's talk about the pattern. The pattern is actually not for Barbie fabric. I know, you're shocked. It is color collage, and it is a free pattern from Northcott. The fabric that this particular pattern features is their color collage fabric, of which I have one color, one yard. I will be remedying that situation very soon. I saw this pattern, I thought this would be awesome for this fabric. Then I was looking through my Barbie fabric and thought this pattern would be awesome for my Malibu Barbie fabric collection. Let's take a look at that collection. We have this fabric featuring Barbie and Ken and Christy. I've also pulled in a couple extras like this. I thought this would be perfect. I'm just not sure how it's going to look on the arrow pointing up, but you know what? There's one way to find out. This is another extra. I happened, I happened to purchase this while I was on my quilty road trip with my mom. It's going to look really good with this pattern. Back to Barbie fabric, this toss with the heart and the bee. Now this fabric is by Riley Blake. So we've got this Barbie toss with the van and Christy and West Coast wave and surfs up and you know, all of the Malibu Barbie stuff. And here is a fun Barbie toss with all of her accessories and her logo and sunglasses and you know just my Barbie stuff. Also part of the Barbie collection. Again, I'm not sure how it's going to look once I put it in almost like a chevron thing, but we'll find out. And then I have a couple more that I pulled out. I need eight fabrics. And I just happened to be looking at my wall of fabric and I saw this and I thought, you know, that might look really good with the Barbie collection. Cause if you hold it up, you know, looks good. That's the fabric. Now let's get to the pattern. Super, 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 super simple. You know, my favorite. So you need eight fabrics. Now, the colors that are going up and down are not in the order 
that they are on the list of fabrics that you need. So I have now just totally messed up my list <laughs> because I mixed all my fabrics up. But anyway, I need 14 inch by width of fabric strips. And depending on which color, I'll either need one or two. Doesn't sound too hard, does it? Once I cut those 14 inch strips, I will subcut them into squares. And then I will make half square triangles to build that. So let's get a cutting. Now we're at the fun part where we're going to make half square triangles. And I have this handy dandy tool from Creative Grids that's going to help me mark my spot. The instructions clearly tell you which fabrics to put together. So fabric B goes with fabric C. So I have all of my fabrics marked. Here's fabric B and there's just one of these sets. So fabric B and fabric C, one pair. So I'm going to pull, I'm done with B now, yay! I'm going to pull these off to the side. I'm going to put them right sides together and of course they don't match perfectly because, you know, I can't cut a straight line. This is an interruption for our regularly scheduled program. Finally, someone has come up with a way for me, April, of April's Craft Room, to cut straight lines. Here I have the ergonomically correct True Cut Rotary Cutter. This cutter, in combination with Fabric Hut's titanium blades, will allow me, April, who's never cut a straight line, to cut a straight, clean line. Let me demonstrate. Now this rotary cutter, when you put on the right attachment, has a lip that grabs on to the ridge that is on this ruler. As you can see, it's not a flat ruler. It has a 90 degree angle at the end with this ridge. I'm going to place my ruler on my fabric. This is the true cut ruler. I'm going to engage the edge holder thing, that's the technical term. Notice I close my rotary cutter when I'm not using it. And here I have the perfect edge. Remember, Grace's True Cut Rotary Cutter and Fabric Hut's Titanium Blades are the perfect combination for a straight cut every time. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now what I like to do is I like to put one corner on a line on my mat and the other corner on a line on my mat. And then I've got from corner to corner. 
Now I take my tool and this is a big tool. It's not even long enough to go from corner to corner. But here I can tell I'm with the little arrow on the tool, I can tell I'm going straight to the corner. Same here. So I hold my tool in place and then the slits allow me to make my marks. What I will do is I will take this to the sewing machine and I will sew a quarter inch on either side. Now, these don't go all the way to the end, so that would make it hard for me to start. So let me line up the edge of the tool and then I can go all the way to the end. Now, I was not perfect on this, but you know, perfection is overrated. So there I can mark all the way to the end and that will create two half square triangles. Now I will need to do that for the entire list. So here it explains how many fabric B's and C's, C's and D's, D's and E's, on and on and on. So let me get these marked, get these sewn and bring them back and show you what's next. I have all of my blocks with a one quarter inch seam on each side of the mark that I made in the middle. Now what I want to do is I want to cut straight down the middle. Now I left them connected because do you see where my tags are? My tags are not on the respective fabrics. So I'm going to try, even though I have to cut these apart, I'm going to try and keep them in some sort of order. I'm going to slice it down the middle. And now I have two half square triangle blocks. I'm going to do that to the rest of my blocks. Here we have our half square triangle blocks. Now technically you should set your seam and then we're going to open them up and we are going to press. We are not going to iron because we don't want our blocks to be out of square. There we go. So I am going to finish ironing all of my half square triangle blocks and then we see if we need to trim them up or we can just go straight to the design wall. So here I have all of my half square triangle blocks completed. There are no instructions on doing any cutting down. So let's take it to the design wall and see if we can get my Barbie quilt to look like that. We're at the design wall. Yay! The next step is to put our half square triangle blocks in such a way that it looks like there are arrows pointing up. Now, hopefully I have left them in the right order because if not, this is going to be fun. a lot like this picture, just with different fabric. So now I need to put this thing together. And it's pretty important that I put it together correctly. I think I can do it. So you wait right there and I will be right back. Before I get started on sewing this quilt, I just want to take a moment to say 
thank you. You guys are so supportive and so kind in your comments. And I can't describe how good that makes me feel that you enjoy my videos. And I get emails from several of you. And I have been super busy between travel and work. So I haven't gotten to respond to emails or do as many videos as I would like, but I now have a retrieve in the travel. So I will be doing more videos. If I were more organized, I would have been prepared, but that's just not how I roll. So I do want to say thank you to some special people who have sent me emails. Lauren, I do not own a shop. It might look like I own a shop. I am trying to personally support all the fabric shops that I go to. That's why it looks like I am, you know, a shop. But I did want to tell you, I have the chevron pattern. I've taken a scan of it and I am going to send that to you as soon as I sit down and follow up on emails. And if you hear a little voice in the background saying, hey, Gigi, that's my granddaughter. Mary, thank you for reaching out to me. I have the peace sign panel. I haven't done anything with the peace sign panel yet. There are so many beautiful panels and so little time. I do intend to do something with it. It's a great panel. Just haven't gotten to it yet. But thank you for reaching out and asking. Tiffany, I do not pre-wash my fabric. Even if it's red or black, I have not done any pre-washing. And this is one of those controversial, if you can have truly controversial issues in quilting. So it's up to you what you want to do. I don't pre-wash. I do, however, when I have some bright colors mixed in with whites or lighter colors, I throw in color catchers. And if I remember, I'll put color catchers in the description below where I have the affiliate link to Amazon where I get, you know, a couple pennies if you buy something using that link. They have worked so far. I do use multiple color catchers if I think that I need to. And so far I have not had an issue. Thank you for reaching out and asking that question. My granddaughter's doing YouTube in the background too. The older granddaughter. Maybe she'll be a star. Carol Bowers. I'm glad that I can make you smile. That is my goal. I want everybody to be happy and do their hobby and not worry about if you make a mistake. Just, you know, be happy, go on. The other option is to cry and that messes up my mascara. It makes my eyes puffy. It just does nothing for me. So I choose smiling. <laughs> and Anne, Oliver is a very persistent kitty. When he wants love, he wants love. And my quilting is not going to get in his way. I'm glad you enjoy seeing him. Carla Sutherland, shout out. Hi, Bardstown. I have a brother who used to live in Bardstown and I've got a niece who still lives in Bardstown. I also want to give a shout out to those who have purchased coffee for me and kept me caffeinated. Thank you, Rhonda, Mary, Roxana, and Bonnie. Okay, back to the good stuff. My quilt top is complete. I haven't decided if I'm going to put a border around it. If I do, it's gonna be pink because it's Barbie and it's gonna be solid because there is a whole lot going on right here. I am very pleased with the way that it turned out. I were I to do it again. See how I've got the contrast between the white and the green this is a little less contrast, and I would have probably been better off to use this in between these two prints, but you know, that's not what I decided to do. And I think there is a little girl who will be 
quite happy with this Barbie quilt. Thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate you giving me your time. I hope that you picked up some little tidbit that will help you. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. And remember, I liked Barbie before Barbie was cool. Okay, so don't be thinking I'm jumping on a trend or anything because if you look back and I'll link, I've done Barbie quilts before. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. to retreat and it just so turns out and it just so turns out not rectangles 14 by 14 no, it'd be a rectangle. now before I get started on sewing this <laughs>